Secret Service officers made activists of the mortgage union Arman draw political graffiti, says the head of the organization. Learn about possible consequences of similar actions from the next story. The chairman of the mortgage committee Arman is concerned about the detainment of several of the organization's activists. Three men led by Azamat Ahmeta were arrested for drawing anti-governmental graffiti. Arman's chair Ermek Narinov is confident that the situation was a setup of the intelligence agencies. Well, they wrote something about Nazarbayev and Karim Masimov. We assume that the fourth person was an officer of the National Security Committee. Whether a decoy was used or not is now a rhetorical question. Nevertheless, Narambayev's colleagues advise him to work more carefully with his followers and activists. Drawing graffiti is not our method. We never do that, nor do we encourage something like that. Politicians warn that even if this was a provocation, the reprimand can be quite real. In 2005, our activist Alibek was convicted because supposedly he or his friends threw a net at the president's portrait. His guilt was not even proven. Some front man has done this, and it turned out that he worked for some secret service. Still, our activist was sentenced for about a year and a half. The activists of Arman might be imprisoned for six years. During the briefing of the Internal Affairs Minister, it was revealed that a criminal case is already instigated against the hooligans. Three people were arrested, and one of them was already wanted by the police for fraud. All arrested are Kazakhs, and they deliberately insulted the dignity of the Kazakh nation, with the goal to stir up the nation hatred. The pro-governmental graffiti drawers said that it is better to stay politically neutral. The design of this wall in Almaty was sponsored by the State Fund of Youth Politics. I think it is prettier this way. <laughs> Drawing graffiti is not the only seemingly innocent activity that can be seriously punished in Kazakhstan. Launching balloons is also on the list. A number of trials against the participants of a rally supporting imprisoned journalists has just come to an end. Roslana Taukina, a flash mob organizer and the president of the foundation Journalists in Trouble, is found guilty. The arrangement of flash mobs, especially with the use of special supplies such as balloons, can end up with prosecution in Kazakhstan. This was exactly the case with human rights activist Roslana Taukina. I ask to recognize Taukina guilty according to the article 373, clause 3, and punish her with a five-day administrative arrest. The court disagreed with the prosecutor but also did not recognize as valid the defense argument, which said that launching balloons is not a protest action. Now the president of the Journalist in Trouble Fund has to pay a fine in the amount of around $500. I think that if they did sentence me to five days of imprisonment, I would gladly take that punishment to demonstrate that we, the journalists, are unbreakable. Together with Taukina, the authorities have also instigated administrative proceedings against the activist of the unregistered political party Alga Vladimir Kozlov and the wife of the convicted journalist Raushana Yesergepov. Supposedly, they formed a criminal group and held a joint protest action on January 6 by launching balloons. The flash mob in support of the imprisoned journalist Ramazan Yesergepov and Tokhniyas Kuchukov did not end well for its participants. Kozlov and Yesergepov were fined for 50 US dollars after being charged with attracting the attention of the public. We have just launched those balloons as a symbol of freedom of journalists. It was nothing serious. We did not have a serious rally. Apparently, no documents have specifics of a rally as a law violation. Now Vladimir Kozlov, Raushan Yisergebova and Roslana Taukina are planning to appeal the decision. This is why the case with the balloons will definitely have a continuation. The condition of Mukhtar Jakishev, the former head of Kazatomprom National Company, worsened during the yesterday's hearing. An ambulance team had to be called to the Sarayarki courtroom. Yesterday, Mukhtar Jakishev's health condition worsened during the hearing in the Sarayarka district court. The former head of Kazakh Atomprom suffered from high blood pressure and an ambulance had to be called to the scene. According to Nurlan Bisikayev, who is again representing Jakishev after the extended sick leave, the defendant was examined by both ambulance and National Security Committee doctors. Indeed, Jakishev's condition worsened and he was brought in the general room where escort was stationed. There he was laid on the bench and waited for medical attention for about 40 minutes. 
According to BCK, his client was taken to an isolation ward. Meanwhile, the attorney submitted several petitions today. One dealt with the postponement of the trial needed by the lawyer and defendant for the familiarization with all materials of the case. BCK also demanded to dismiss Bolat Isataev, the attorney recently appointed by the court. The latter supported BCK's request and is ready to exit the process. However, trial refused all petitions and left lawyer Isataev. Police continue its investigation of journalist Sayat Shulimbayev's murder. Now it has a printed list of, of his last calls. Everyone who contacted the reporter a day before the tragedy are now being questioned. Security officials are interested not only in professional but also personal life of Sayat Shulimbayev. Meanwhile, the Internal Affairs Ministry confirmed today again that people who visited the Kazakh office of Stan Internet portal on January 18th were not from the police. Last week, two unknown civilians entered the outlet's office, introduced themselves as law enforcement officers and attempted to collect as much information about the work of the office as possible. Nikki Askar Akhmetov and Arman Baituriev Askar Akhmetov and Arman Baitulev are not listed in the staff records of the Internal Affairs Ministry. I can tell you that the investigation was not transferred from Astana to Almaty. The Alliance of Analytical Organizations has published its annual report and revealed its forecasts for the future. Sadly, the age of the corporation crisis will be will be likely replaced by the crisis of sovereignty. Also, economical, political and ethnic issues threaten the state system of Kazakhstan. Find out the rest from the next story. Problems in politics and economics threaten the sovereignty of Kazakhstan, reported scholars during the recent presentation of the first annual report on the last year's development of the state and society. Experts say that the Kazakh elite did not learn anything from the crisis. Unfortunately, this disappointment will last for a long time, as it happened both in 2007 and 2008. It is important to avoid the transformation of disappointment into annoyance and rancor. Then, of course, the problem will become very serious. According to analysts, 2009 exposed ethnical issues, which was demonstrated by the society's reaction to the idea of the National Unity Doctrine. The year will be also remembered for rivalry within the defense and law enforcement agencies. The ineffectiveness of the state crisis control program and the incapacity of parties intensified. Inertness in foreign economy field only progressed. The influence of world leaders, including Russia and China, has negatively impacted Kazakhstan. For instance, the establishment of the customs union is profitable only to partners. In the visible future, Kazakhstan will suffer the most, especially in machine tool construction, engineering and consumer industry, because it is not ready for the competition with Russian and Belarusian producers. Analysts do not expect much from 2010. Experts give a 10% possibility to the optimistic development of the economy. Scholars hope that officials will study the published report. The collective work of seven research organizations was supported by the Friedrich Ebert Fund. Authors say that the report's objectivity is secured through the non-participation of the state as well as financial and industrial groups. They nevertheless accepted the culture's minister's proposal to finance their tour around Kazakhstan. These were the latest news from Kazakhstan. Thank you for being with us and goodbye.